Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm Mike with Last Line of Defense. I never really say that in my videos, but hey, I'm Mike, Last Line of Defense. This video is gonna be kind of like an after action report or something from a course that I just recently took this past weekend actually at Direct Action Resource Center, Darcy for short. The course was Tactical Urban Sustainment Course, Tusk, T-U-S-C. Uh, so this video, I don't even I don't even know what I'm gonna be talking about. Uh, I'm just gonna be kind of talking as I go. So I'm guessing the video will end up being pretty long, but we'll just kind of see because that's that's how my videos go. So if you wanna just sit back, throw on a pair of headphones or do whatever while you listen, there won't be a whole lot of visual aspect, but I will be throwing in clips of footage, which I haven't even gone through. So the course, I'll get, I'll get into things. This is kind of a setup. This is just a talking video, so I'm gonna talk. So that's what it, it, it is. It is what it is. It rained the whole time. This was in Little Rock, Arkansas at Direct Action Resource Center's training facility. And it rained pretty much the whole weekend. Uh, when it wasn't raining, we were inside kind of having course classroom type discussions and training and whiteboard stuff. Uh, so there was a, a big training aspect of it, a, a big informational aspect of it. And then there was some outdoor shot. aspect of it, which was largely in the rain. And then there was the right shoot house dick. aspect of it, which was a uh, simunition force on force. So we're fighting, shooting basically paintballs kind of at other people, which was my first time doing that. So a lot of fun. All that to say, oh, and a lot of that, the majority of that stuff was done at night. I was fortunate enough to borrow a pair of uh, night vision binos and all the gear associated with that. So. All that to say, there wasn't a whole lot of good opportunities for sexy filming footage B-roll stuff because I didn't bring a camera crew or anything like that. I just, I do this on myself, set up a tripod sometimes. I threw a GoPro on for some of it. Okay, all that to say, I'll be throwing in here and there whatever footage I have. So maybe there'll be some cool stuff, but I don't think there's gonna be a ton of cool stuff. Okay, big intro, but but yeah, so Direct Action Resource Center is a training facility that opened, I'm not, I don't know much of their history. They opened back in mid, late 90s. Uh, owner and operator over there is a rich, great guy, super knowledgeable, has worked with tier one units, SWAT units all over the country. I mean, they, these guys, I think their bread and butter really is teaching people how to be more effective. These are professional door kickers. These are people whose job, military law enforcement, it is to clear rooms, breach doors, all that kind of good stuff. So Rich and Travis were the people over there that uh, I dealt with, both awesome dudes, nothing but good things to say. Travis was kind of a dick sometimes, but all in good fun, I think. Uh, anyway, great experience. I'm gonna be talking about that experience. I'm gonna be kind of giving you some lessons that I learned, uh, as well as just kind of giving you an idea of, of what it is. So the facility largely trains military law enforcement, like I just said, but every once in a while they open a course up to civilians, regular old dudes like me. And one of the courses they've been doing, I think pretty much every year for the last, last handful of years, is this one. Tusk. So my friend Josh hooked me up with Rich over there. Rich invited me out. Uh, my other friends, Rand and Bruce at Shooting Surplus, hey. you guys have known about them. I can't link to them, but Shooting Surplus should be easy to find. So Rand, Bruce, huge shout out. Josh, Rich, all you guys made this happen. Shooting Surplus paid for some of my stuff, my simunitions, and yeah, everything came together. I was able to go out there, do some training, a whole lot of fun. Some other great students there at the course. I learned some from them, some from the instructors, and it was it was just a great experience overall. So the course, Tactical Urban Sustainment, the, the idea, the premise behind it is a grid down scenario. So whether it be natural disaster, some kind of government thing, zombies, aliens, whatever, however we got there, it doesn't really matter. What matters is there's no power, there's no water, you can't call the cops. So you kind of have to fend for yourself. You're maybe going from point A to point B or your home burned down and you're out in the wild in an urban environment living out of your backpack. I'm gonna do a separate video, I don't know if I talked about this already. I'm gonna do a separate follow-up video to this one, talking specifically gear, all things gear. What I used, what worked, what didn't work, plate carrier, bag, battle belt, guns I used, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for that video, get subscribed to the channel and it'll be coming up. Probably not the next video, but 
when I have time. I just had time, a few minutes here to film this video. I've been kind of going nonstop since I got back. So, so yeah, I'm probably a little scatterbrained, but it is what it is. I did use this Vertex Gamut Plus bag. Uh, because I try different bags all the time. So I asked, I asked Vertex to send me out this bag. They did because I love the gamut regular, but I needed a bag that was a little bit bigger. But I, don't I didn't want a bag that was so big as to be a burden because we're gonna be wearing this, we're gonna be living out of it. Gonna be clearing rooms with this bag on, going down hallways, fitting in doors, running, jumping, all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want a very big bag, but I did need a bag that was big enough to carry all the stuff. And I didn't want a bag with like Molly all over it, with stuff dangling off, flopping around, because there were some things I learned while doing simunition training, especially at night, but it applies to the day too, is you wanna be pretty quiet. There's a lot of shuffling of feet and banging around of stuff in the bags and you can hear people pretty easily coming before you can see them. So silence is, is good. So I didn't want a bag that was, you know, big, bulky, bounce stuff to the outside of it. So the, the, the pack was great for that. But like I said, I'm not getting too much into the gear. But we're living out of our bags, so that means food, that means water procurement, that means water filtration, that means cleaning gear to keep your guns up and going, sleeping supplies, medical gear, everything you would expect. If you've seen my kind of get home or EDC type videos, you kind of get an idea of like how I prepare for that. So that, a lot of that stuff carried over to how I set up my bag for the course. Uh, and yeah, we, we talked about considerations, you know, pump filters versus gravity filters, tablets, sleep systems, hammocks, mosquito nets, which were, the mosquitoes were bad. I don't have to deal with that much out here in Colorado, but oh man, out there in Arkansas, it was it was something else. I still have bites on me that I'm, I'm trying not to scratch. But so you learned a lot of stuff. And the thing was, you had an opportunity to take, take apart your pack, go through why I have this, this is what I'm using, and then compare it to everybody else's pack and Rich would give you individual feedback on, well, yeah, that's good, but you might wanna do this next time. And then obviously the experience of the course actually using this stuff, uh, living out of our bags. We slept in the shoot house because it was just pouring down rain, uh, but living out of our bags for four days and three nights, you, you learn a lot. You kind of trim out the fat of what you don't need and say, oh, this would have been really nice to have, so I might add that next time. So the survival aspect, water procurement, food, cooking your food, sleeping, just surviving was, was one big main aspect of the course. Um, but a bigger aspect I would say is learning how to fight with this stuff and also work with a team. So I've done a couple courses where we've done some basic fundamental room clearing stuff, but this, I mean, we still, we're just, you know, it's, it's four days with a bunch of civilian dudes. It was still basic stuff in the big scheme of things, but compared to the average regular Joe Schmo civilian, it was kind of more advanced stuff. So we learned communication techniques, how to move silently through buildings, uh, how to either clear and search for something in a building versus move through it to an objective. Um, and it was force on force ammunition stuff. So we had some bad guys, op four as they're called opposing forces. So we have to eliminate the threats while working as a cohesive team unit, learned how to kind of attack a position or retreat from a position, all, all kinds of valuable stuff that for me, a lot of it was, a lot of it was new, even though I have done a little bit of training in that stuff, the majority, the bulk of my training is really centered around concealed carry. Uh, big on concealed carry, I carry a gun every day. Chances are if I have, to, if I have to use a gun, it'll probably be in rule of law, normal life at you know a movie theater or something like that. So that's what I train for. But a big part of my mindset, this channel even, everything about me is preparedness. I don't really, I don't think I come off as a huge prepper type. Uh, and I'm not a huge prepper type, not like a doomsday prepper. Uh, prepper kind of carries negative connotation with the word, but I would consider myself kind of a light prepper survivalist. So I have preparations but this is the first course, the actual first course that you know was taught by a professional basically uh, who has tons of real world experience both with himself and with, with the forces and the divisions and the units that they're training. So tons of knowledge on how to actually survive in this kind of scenario. So, so he gives a lot of tips on, on what works and what doesn't. So anyways, first time I've taken training like this, 
So it was an eye opener in a lot of ways. I, I, I'm not going to, you know, give away the whole course because I think it's an experience that you really have to experience for yourself. But some things I, I've already been talking about some things, but water, water storage and water filtration, stuff like gravity filters are great. Wasting your time pumping a hand pump, wasting energy, expelling energy where there's, you know, a opposing forces bad guys out there roaming around is no good way easier to set up gravity filter and let gravity do the work for you also cooking considerations and needs you always have time to heat up water boil water or do you need something on the go uh, a lot of stuff to consider and this course was kind of if, if you haven't done that kind of stuff fortunately i have done a lot of that stuff i've done a lot of backpacking i've done like you know just my own pseudo weekend survival survival experiments. I have some friends that are preppers, so we kind of get together and talk about this stuff quite a bit. So even for me, who I would consider myself an intermediate prepper type person, I still learned a lot as well in, in that aspect of it alone. But, but the gun aspect was eye-opening. Another huge awesome thing, which was unique to our our course probably specifically and this may turn some of you guys off but that's that's okay I don't care too much but I'm a Christian I don't talk about it too much on the channel really uh, but but rich was a Christian Travis the other trainer there was a Christian uh, and every single person I'm pretty sure there was 12 of us here was a Christian as well so there's a lot of kind of downtime where you're either digesting what you learn practicing it clearing rooms kind of taking breaks while other people have their run cooking meals eating them hanging out getting ready for bed a lot of time where you're just talking with each other and yeah a lot of it is talking gun stuff gear stuff but a lot of it was faith-based stuff which was which was awesome and unexpected uh, for me so for fellow believers out there you, you might have an experience like that which was really cool I was thinking about not even talking about that but but I figured I would because it was just it, it added to the whole the whole experience because we kind of talked about you know faith in in context to a lot of a lot of this other stuff preparedness killing bad guys if it needs to be done all that kind of stuff so really really a solid great experience that i had there again direct action resource center darcy isn't they're not big on training civilian they don't have a huge social media presence I right now i don't even think they really have a website i'm kind of hoping to try to push him towards towards expanding on that kind of stuff but they don't really they don't really need it necessarily because in the industry, they're already well known and established. So a lot of you guys are mill guys, a lot of you guys are law enforcement guys. If you have the opportunity, if, you're, if your unit or your team or whatever has the opportunity to take some training uh, from Rich either at their facility, which is awesome, or they travel around and, and teach you know at different departments and stuff, definitely jump jump on that or if you want to if, if you're ahead of something like that definitely reach out to them uh, and and inquire about the courses they do obviously the tactical urban sustainment course isn't really like a law enforcement geared course that's like their civilian course but they have all sorts of other other really awesome stuff also if you're in the area they do this thing called op4 uh, the op4 guys that I met there probably don't even want me talking about it because they want all the op4 action for themselves but they have teams, you know, SWAT teams or whatever come out there for training and they need opposing forces. They need bad guys that they can shoot up. So civilian dudes or I mean, they could be law enforcement or military dudes as well uh, can sign up to be opposing forces. And you go and you get shot, you hang out in the shoot house, you, you shoot back and there's there's different scenarios and different stuff. But a really awesome thing, if you're local to Little Rock, something you might want to jump on really really unique opportunity if you live out there i i don't i don't know i don't think there's anything like that out here in colorado that i can jump on anyway but if i was out there i'd probably be doing that pretty regularly night vision also huge eye opener for me i have like a cheap night vision thing and a cheap thermal thing but outside of that i'm all set up for for white light and you know it's it's dark half the day sometimes so night vision was a thing that i i'm i'm I have my hands in a lot of things. I, I My money is split in a lot of different directions, overlanding stuff, gun stuff, and regular life stuff as well. Saving for retirement, home, home maintenance, repairs, uh, everything. So night vision is a good chunk of money that you have to invest to get legitimate gear. But 
through this course, I was able to use it. And we had some scenarios where we had night vision and they didn't have night vision. We had night vision, they had night vision. Sometimes I was a bad guy and the good guys didn't have night vision. And it's a serious force multiplier. I mean, insane what a good a good set of night vision will do with with a with an IR laser. So that was that was eye opening as well. I'm not saying that I'm going to get into hardcore night vision stuff immediately, but it definitely made me want to. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens down the road. But it was. I mean, that that was a great experience. Um, both learning experience because you can, you don't just throw on a set of night vision if you if you haven't used it much and you're just like okay i'm 100 percent better because there's pros and cons your field of vision is narrowed and it just it takes getting used to on top of that simunitions force on force stuff i was wearing a gas mask helmet ear pro the whole time because i don't want you know, i don't want to mess this up right you don't want to you don't want to get shot in the face and destroyed so night vision plus gas mask plus heat plus uh, all of the humidity kind of was not ideal conditions. So I was using night vision in a non-ideal condition. It was still hugely beneficial uh, at nighttime, obviously. So yeah, it made me want night vision, if nothing else, but also was just a great experience uh, using it and getting more comfortable using it uh, and manipulating the weapon with a, with an IR laser versus catching my my optic or my red dot as I normally do. So so that was that was another great aspect. And then force on force, simunition stuff. It was in the context of full kit. You know, I'm using my AR chest rig, I got OWB battle belt, and a pistol as my sidearm. Obviously, if I need to transition to it, which which I did a, a couple times because clearing malfunctions and stuff with gas mask and full kit and gloves on and stuff is it's a pain, especially with night vision. You you don't have near focus with that stuff, so I can't just be like identify it. Everything is very tactile, which was which was another learning experience for me because. A lot of my training is visual identification, you know, open the chamber, look in there, finger it, see what's going on. Uh, that changes a lot with gloves, night vision, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but simunitions, uh, I do, I've do. i done a ton of flat range stuff, a lot of training, a lot of practice on my own, and shooting static targets, even when I'm on the move, which I try to do a lot, cover, concealment, all that kind of stuff changes entirely in force on force. So against an opposing force, a real breathing, thinking, especially these guys, tactically sound human being, where you're in an area with cover, where you're shooting at paper or steel and you, you think you're tucked away, this guy's gonna hit your knee with this ammunition round. They're gonna get your shoulder, is gonna get your face. So it's, it's an eye-opening, just in that, when you think you have good cover, but you don't, but also you have cover here. There's another guy that peeks out the window over here, comes into the room or flanks you. It's just force on force is just completely different than, than training paper. And I've done all kinds of training paper. I mean, I do a lot of movement, shooting on the move, like getting behind cover, concealment really on the range. Usually it's not really cover, uh, but it's, pseudo cover and yeah shooting targets i i have access to just the outdoors so i have 180 270 360 sometimes degree ranges so i try to train in as realistic scenarios as i can but still doesn't even come close to touching what you're going to learn in an encounter in a force on forces uh scenario so yeah i don't know i think that's it i actually got to get to i got to get to some stuff so that's that's all I got for you right now. Maybe I'll do like an after action report too if I actually have some time to organize some thoughts. Yeah, but I dead. wanted to get this out there while it was all kind of all fresh in my mind um, before waiting too long. So that's nice this man. video. Now I'm gonna just kind of toss together a couple of clips maybe of, I, I asked some of the other students there uh, if they would just talk for a little bit uh, about why they took the course, kind of what they learned, that kind of stuff. So I'll throw that in here. Again, huge shout out and thanks to Josh, Rand, Shooting Surplus in general, Bruce over there as well for kind of putting this all together and making it happen. Great, great experience. If you have the opportunity to jump on this course, definitely do. If you have the opportunity to train with uh, Darcy in general, jump on that too.
Name's Rand Hovey. Um, as far as background, I have no prior law enforcement, military, anything like that. Um, I've always been interested in guns, obviously. Kind of started, uh, kind of once I got married, and I felt kind of a, you know, natural thing to protect my wife and then you know I had a kid and it just kind of escalated from there. Guys, my know. name is Cole Rogers. I attended Darcy Tusk. The reason why I came out to Darcy just to completely learn a whole new skill set. I'm married, beautiful wife Ashley, two beautiful children and if something were to happen whether it be a natural disaster uh, or we would have a threat on our home I am failing them and to me that's the important part about being a man is having self-awareness and vulnerability to understand that and swallowing your pride. My name's Travis. The uh, reason behind taking uh, the Darcy course, the Tusk class, was, I mean, just the confidence that if something were to happen, that I can take care of my family, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, my neighborhood, or just, just, that, just that confidence that knowing that you have the ability at least to know how to be able to get something done in case of a situation, you know? My name is Tanner Austin. The reason I took this course it was a um, it was a long ways, I guess you can say. I've never, I've, I guess I've never been around guns most of my most of my life, and I hated that I, I couldn't, you know, just not having that figure in my life to show me that. And and if it came to a point where I, I get married or I, you know, somebody comes to my home, I, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, and also, my plans are to join the military, and can't really. You know, join the military and not being comfortable with guns just doesn't work. So definitely here was completely out of my comfort zone. You know, I've had maybe five to six uh, classes. Most of it's all been kind of static stuff, punching paper, you know, nothing, no realness to it, no one firing back at you. I've had my concealed license now for about six years, seven years. Took several pistol classes, uh, concealed weapons classes like that. Never any tactical, no military background, nothing like that. Just always had a fascination with uh, firearms. So, you know, naturally you'll get your concealed carry and, and train and, and it just kind of comes with the territory, you know, taking a, a class like this. So, okay. force on force, that's okay. definitely the highlight. You get to, get to shoot people. <laughs> or, or you, yeah. you get shot, you get shot too, but you know. Uh, learn tons, man, from day one. Learn, you know, movement, uh, tactics, you know, angles, you know, just, uh, stuff that you normally wouldn't think about. Or if you do think about it, it's more of like a Hollywood blockbuster type of deal, other than like real, you know, mechanics and movement, you know. I was nothing but nervous, never been shot these sim rounds, and I'm like, oh gosh, this is this is gonna be crazy. And uh, the first night, you know, we were just, we got our, we got our lights and everybody else has their, night vision goggles and we're just getting just punctured but uh you know it's so funny though because even though we got completely wrecked you know we learned something and then, so the next day so like the next day me and my me and my partner we travis we tried we went over it and then we worked it and then we did pretty did pretty decent the next night you know it was, it was good you learned how to clear a room um you learned how to move through a building and you know, protect yourself and your team. You know, it's it's a lot more to it than what it looks like on the movies. Um, one of the things that you don't really realize until you get in it, and then you have some pressure put on you, you have some people shooting back at you, you know, all the training and stuff like that. It really changes things. And there's more to it than the um, tactical side of it. I mean, the nonverbal communication, working with your teammates, that type of mentality can seem to be lost in today's age. What I really got out of it more than anything is uh, just the communication piece. Uh, I think that goes, the communication with your teammates for me is huge because so much we do out there requires communication and we just don't do a good job of it. But yes, tactically, the confidence, teamwork, teammates and communication, that's really what I got out of Tusk. So, so far, Darcy has been pretty great. I would say if anybody interested in taking the class, they should take it. Uh, I recommend it to anybody. Look those, look these guys up. Nothing like it. So and I'll do it again. If, it, if it's here next year, if he's op opening it, I'm, I'm here. So. All right, guys. I think that wraps this video up. It was a doozy. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. Uh, feel free to ask questions down below. If you have anything, I'll try and get to them. Uh, and I'll put all the relevant links and stuff that I can down below. 
Thanks for your time. Get subscribed. Again, the video on all the gear coming up. Maybe I'll link to some of the gear down below if I remember as well. But yeah, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment, say what's up. Maybe you've trained with Darcy, let me know. Maybe you are Darcy, Travis Rich. I doubt you made it to the end, but if you did, thanks for everything. Until next time, guys, take care.